And while Jonathan's doing that, I'll go ahead and get the talkie bits out of the way. Um, welcome to the Sunday virtual flight online flight. We do this twice a week uh, on Sunday and Monday evenings. Uh, if this is your first time with us, welcome. Uh, we do use Discord for voice comms, so please keep it fr family friendly. No profanity, um, no uh, religion, no politics, no sports. Let's uh, try to have a good time and enjoy each other's company. Uh, flight plan today is really centered around general aviation in the middle of uh, North Carolina in the United States. Uh, this just so happens to be where I took took all of my flight instructions. So we're we're hitting some of my old haunts and giving myself some flashbacks tonight. So have a funny story or two to, to tell as we go along the way. But anyway, I hope everybody enjoys this. Great, thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, Joe, and uh, hi, everyone. Hey, hey. Um, thanks, Joe. I'm looking forward to them stories. So given our weather conditions, runway 20 for our departure, and our first destination is Air Harbor, also known as Scare Harbor here in the uh, in the local vernacular. Anyway, it's uh, it's an enjoyable little place. Nice. Being local to the area, I did. I purchased uh, KGSO and KCLT. Uh, the flight sim.to uh, renditions of those are are good. I think the, uh, the the payware is better, but for a group flight, I think the uh, what you have on flight sim.to should should work just fine. Yeah, Joe, I downloaded everything you suggested there. It looked good. Um, I don't. I didn't compare it to before and after, but it still looks very good. Yeah, I think the uh, developer did a great job of Charlotte Motor Speedway. It looks. It looks lifelike. Really good. and get in the air and just orbit the airfield. Evening everyone, can I have a mic check please? All fives. Lovely, cheers. of you who had joined two hours ago because I had a typo in my invite, I do apologize. <laughs> it's okay. We, we were a few, a few here, I don't, maybe three, four of us or something like that. I, uh, I am almost suspecting that. Yeah, I was here earlier. It was kind of lonely. You had crickets on the uh, on the runway, right? Exactly. I saw someone uh, was using that new uh, what is it called, the Orny Hopter or something like that. 
Ornithopter. Ornithopter, yeah. I think I'll call it the Dragonfly. Oh, really nice. Nice to see. I tried it in Doom there. So Joe, Joe, are you in the uh, regular 172? Yep. I am, and I'm in the analog 172. Yeah, the, the classic is stock, stock one, so to say. Yep. Yep. I have forgotten how much I really do love steam gauge cockpits instead of glass. Yeah, same here. <laughs> yeah, it's nice with the variation also. Must be an age thing. <laughs> well, then yeah. I would love Steam. I like Steam as well. I love especially the black square ones, but uh, yeah, the classic 172 is actually really good. Yeah, I'm finding myself doing more and more, you know, VOR kind of stuff too. It's it's a lot of fun. Well, we don't have far to taxi, but I, I suggest we go ahead and mosey down toward the runway. Um, I guess use the grass. But uh, all these airports that we're going to visit today, you have uh, been flying there yourself. Yeah, these are some of my old haunts. I think there's one on here that I threw in just for the fun of it. There's a little bit of a surprise on uh, on touch and go. So uh, yeah, other than that one, yeah. Ah, nice. You might want to just pay attention on your second touch and go. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. Good evening, good morning everyone. Voice check please. Evening Alice. Get loud and clear. Got here at last. 81 degrees here today, Joe, in your language. Oh, that sounds perfectly wretched, Alice. <laughs> what's what's where, look, weather looks all right? I think I've got live weather on your neck of the woods. Yeah, it's okay. It's a little chilly here. It's uh, 40 degrees Fahrenheit today. Well, it's not very warm, is it? It's not 80. <laughs> You're speaking a foreign language to me. I had to go to my calculator and do a conversion before I spoke to you. 
27 degrees Celsius. And we got the same temperature in Montana, 40 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm pretty chilly. Oh, David, I think you could probably give us a definition of pretty chilly. <laughs> I can. Well, I could, yeah. Now we actually only have a couple of minus. It's okay. Yeah, we've been having, at the, at the most here, we had 27 minus here in the mid, mid Sweden, but it was only a couple of days. And yeah, it came a lot of snow, about 200. 210 centimeters, uh, but it's all melted away now. It's a stack of ice, like a glazed country now. All right, it's two paths, so if you're not in the air, let's uh, take it there. Copy that. First destination is Whiskey 88, Air Harbor. Oh, good evening, everyone. Radio check. Evening. 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 Thank you very much. Two five nine at eight knots. So I guess runway two eight. Copy that. Roger on the way. And also as a heads up, there are a number of high power lines and radio antennas around this particular airfield, so beware. Just out of curiosity, I'm I'm curious to, to hear how many of you are using Volanta and uh, transmitter tonight. I'm on transmitter. Yeah, I'm just oh. using transmitter. I've just loaded Volanta. Yeah, I've no got chance yet. Yeah, I'm running Volanta just to see how well it works. Yeah, I got your message, uh, Jonathan, but I haven't uh, downloaded it yet. Haven't had time. Rubbing both. I typically run both. I enjoy them. The only thing wrong with Philanta is it shows you exactly how you landed. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. We can't use that then. <laughs> it's quite cool though because you can spin around in 3D and see your entire flight plan. Yeah, I tried it there earlier on when they just came out with it, they got it from Orbex, but it, you know, I didn't like it that much then, but maybe it's changed. I know things are going wrong, Jonathan, because I, I see my yellow plane, but I have no red little fella chasing me. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's just transmitter doing its thing. I think the um, the people running the servers have just had enough of it. <laughs> I was quite surprised when I looked the other day and yeah, it was hitting about four and a half million hits a day. It's amazing really, isn't it? I'm in my favourite 182RG today. I've actually got the grossly easy H145 today. I had a few goes to get to grips with it. I'm not going to say I'm going to do a touch and go mind. Sorry, what server is it? Southeast Asia. Everyone just popped out. I'll just refresh it. Thanks. Where do you hang out, Joe, relative to where we are? So, Ellis, this is my hometown. This is where I grew up and went to college. Mm hmm. Met my wife here. Um, Greensboro is a neat place. Um, Forty years ago, it was the denim capital of the world, and a lot of the denim that was manufactured for the major jean manufacturers were uh, were made here. Uh, Levi Strauss uh, had an R&D facility here. Wrangler was one of the larger denim vendors, and then there's. Uh, all the tobacco companies that we had here as well. So a lot of industrial kinds of development many years ago. So it's in your genes then. <laughs> oh, <laughs> me. oh, there's an A for the damn first dad joke. There we go, we've started. That's good. From an agriculture perspective, uh, a lot of dairy farming uh, in this part of North Carolina. Some chickens and hogs, uh, that's really about it. Uh, and then cotton, of course. Well, not so much anymore, but cotton was a major crop here too. hills. The hills that are here are volcanic uh, core remnants. There was one that I did not have pacing or spacing to be able to fit it onto the flight plan, but I'll, I'll do another one. There's an old exposed volcanic core not too far from, I guess, our fourth airport. Uh, it's called Pilot Mountain if you want to look it up on Google, Google Maps. Paolo Mountain. Paolo Mountain. Pilot Mountain. Oh, Pilot Mountain. Right. That's an impressively modeled radio mast there. Done a vol uh, Volanta tutorial, that Jonathan. Uh, I did one a very long time ago, but I yeah, I'm probably going to have to record another one. <laughs> it has changed quite a lot. Yeah, well, any quick tips? Uh, let me know. I see, I've just back from my holidays today, so I've just loaded it literally. It's very good. It records your flights, you know, and everything about what you did. It's very cool.
Jonathan, from what I've observed, is very much a point-to-point -point kind of display where you're going and not showing waypoints or touch and goes. Yeah, you would use it in concert with something else. Yep, that's what I assume. Makes sense. Uh, fun quirk with this uh, new uh, Dune helicopter. It's uh, added new uh, presets for the keyboard and uh, flight controls. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, exactly. It set up some default uh, when you started. Right, and then when I switched over back to my RV 14, it kept those defaults. I had to go back into uh, controls. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. Uh, that would make me want to drive to Redmond with a ball bat, <clears throat> just saying. More trees on the approach. Yeah, that's why I'm still at the uh, starting airport here. Still resetting all my controls. Yeah, the scenery add-in that I put on the uh, flight plan, Ellis, got rid of some of those trees around Air Harbor. Otherwise, it's uh, interesting. The sim seem, seems a bit sharper, but a bit juddery. I don't know if that's the update. Um, I've been running... DirectX 12 for the last week or so, and it's definitely sharper. However, it rent, you know the difference in the rendering, but I've not. I think it might be smoother in DirectX 12. I'm not sure. Yeah, I might have to uh, go over in that case. Bodies of water that are near this particular airport are the uh, watersheds for uh, Greensboro, Lake Brant, and Lake Townsend. Great place to go fishing. Lots of tall towers around here. Yes, quite a few. These houses seem to have nice big back gardens, or yards. Or... Yeah, there are quite a few large homes once you get west of Air Harbor. Quite a lot of golf courses here too. First airport was beautiful. Air, Air Harbor. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's one of my favorite places. It's got that primitive charm to it, I guess, David. Ah, uh, nice. And a good coffee shop. Thinking about illness here, of course. Of course. Ellis, one of the destinations on our trip today was uh, one that you used on your large travel home. Oh, is it? What one was that, Jay? Uh, <laughs> Stanley County. I think that's the one that I popped on for you when you were in the area. But it hang around here and do a few seconds and wait for everybody. I'm at the second airfield now. Yeah, I'm going to do the same. Just on fridge. Jonathan, I included this one for senior just because of his love of pylon. <laughs> I wonder where he is. I bet he's falling asleep again, isn't he? There is a few of them in there, both sides on the... Oh yeah, you got to take care on takeoff, for sure. Go under them by the look of it. They're right across the end of the runway. Yeah, they're kind of scary. <laughs> There's a big freeway under me there. actually the home base of Piedmont Airlines. So for those of you who are interested in joining me on our DC-3 shenanigans, that's one of the airports that's gonna be on that flight plan. That's where uh, Piedmont Airlines got its start and uh, was eventually merged into uh, US Air. Go around again. Well, it's better if I put some name tags on, I can see people. Uh, yes, we can hear you. Cheers, John. Wow, look at the bumpy highways. Yeah, some of the mesh needs some work. I hate to say that. To be fair, some of it is new road construction, so it's 
probably haven't had much of a chance to tweak some of it. Someone that's just joined is asking which uh, airfield we're at. We're just leaving Greensboro North, which is 36 November Charlie. Back in the fold again, there's a lot of name tags in front of me, so that's good. If I remember correctly, this the one that we're at currently, Greensboro North, actually has a sort of an upward slope if you're facing uh, bearing D4. Good evening. And plenty of open field at the end of that runway, uh, at least on the uh, east side. Pretty high risk of a mid-air today, I think. I'm guessing we're looking at runway 22 at the next airfield at Smith Reynolds. Yep, that would make sense. And runway uh, 22 and 04, the original runways at that particular airport, they actually added another pair uh, later on, particularly when they started doing some aircraft maintenance for, uh, for Piedmont. They needed a longer strip. just realized I put the wrong title on the YouTube video. I've put South Carolina in the title. It should be North, shouldn't it? Uh, it's all cackalacky. It's fine. Different barbecue, though. <laughs> yeah, vinegar versus mustard, right? You had to say that. It's been a minute since I've had any mustard style barbecue sauce. That stuff is good.
though RJ Re RJ Reynolds was um, headquartered in Winston Salem, so Winston was really famous for a couple of things: uh, tobacco, uh, for one, and then Texas Pete, which is a hot sauce in the United States. Quite a and large, NASCAR. yeah, and NASCAR. Quite a quite a large. Uh, immigrant population uh, during settlement uh, from Germany here in, uh, in the Carolinas, both North and South Carolina, actually. You're a bit like us, Joe. Everybody here is an immigrant. Some just arrived earlier than others. I do like the 3D flight path on Volanta, it looks quite cool. What are the big buildings up ahead, Joe? Is that a town, a city? So, uh, at one juncture, there was a major banking presence here in Winston-Salem. Um, all of the banks in, in the southeast have, you know, sort of mega merged together, but uh, Wachovia Bank and Trust was actually headquartered here in, in Winston um, and then has been merged in with uh, Wells Fargo. Some of those other buildings are, you know, footprint from R.J. Reynolds. There's a major uh, research hospital here in Winston. associated with Wake Forest University, which is in uh, Winston-Salem. Good evening, everyone. Hey, Good evening. Hey Peter. hey, Peter. Good evening. I've been watching uh, Jonathan's stream and thought, I can't miss this. <laughs> All right. Joe, what's happy bottom? That sounds like a loaded question. <laughs> I don't know. It's a uh, name tag is sticking right in front of me as I'm following his path. Well, maybe they win the name tag award. Could be. It's about 13 miles out. Happy Bottom was famously the name of the the bar at Edwards Air Force Base, wasn't it? Yes, it was Pancho's Happy Bottom Lighting Club, I believe it was called.
So one of the things I'm looking into on this um, new virtual airline, I'm having to configure the airports and there's things like landing fees and touch and go fees and um, maintenance costs. So doing all these touch and goes would cost a fortune. <laughs> It's only fake money, right, Jonathan? I guess yeah, it's funny money. Wallet, you could take that off your virtual wallet, couldn't you? Well, this is the thing. If you're flying GA all the time, it's going to be quite an expensive operation. You'll have to go and do, like, you know, taking cans of baked beans across the country or something to make some money. That was a very neat formation landing with that gentleman there. Never ran into each other either. Yeah, it just notes the aircraft seem easier to see as well. Two three right at the next airfield. ILS is uh, one oh nine point five five. Uh, one oh nine five five. Thanks. Yeah, I've just fired up FSLTL in the background, so by the time I get there, the airfield should be full of airplanes. <laughs> KGSO, I'm going to uh, blaze my own trail in terms of approach. Okay, which one? Uh, for nostalgia's sake, I've got to land on runway 32. So I'll be sure to stay out of everybody's way. Pretty solid crosswind, uh, Joe. Good luck. I'll go with you. So there's two funny stories associated with that particular runway for me. One is once you get close to KGSO, you're going to notice a number of uh, gasoline tank storage uh, buildings, tanks operated by um, Colonial Pipeline. So it's it's basically gas for the eastern United States is pumped from Louisiana up into the Carolinas and Greensboro is a bulk breaking point for shipping that gasoline out. So the very first approach that I that I had into Greensboro, I remember being on final 
looking down at my airspeed gauge and was determined that I was going to be nowhere near stall speed coming into runway 32. And my, uh, my flight instructor was having a huge chuckle at me. Uh, the air traffic controllers thought it was amusing too. Uh, they said, wow, we thought we had a uh, 727 on final and not a 172 RG. <laughs> But the thought that popped into my head, Jonathan, was, you know, when I turned final, it's like, oh, my God, I'm going to die. I'm going to stall, and I'm going to end up in one of these tank farms, and I'm going to make the news and cause a massive explosion. <laughs> You're still here, Joe. Yeah, I had visions of, of trying to avoid being human barbecue. So out of that little incident, my flight instructor thought it would be great fun, and I'm, I guess I'm telling my age here. Uh, he used my he used for me as, a, as my call sign, Speed Racer. <laughs> That's gonna stick. Oh, it's stuck for sure. I've been tempted to change my nickname on the server to that anyway. So was it a no flap landing then? Uh, yeah, the first one was. <laughs> Imagine at that speed the flaps tear off anyway, so. Along with the landing gear. I think I was at about a hundred knots. But it didn't take me long to figure it out and got comfortable and knew I wasn't gonna die if I, you know, followed the procedure. But it does make a heck of a story, I guess. Yeah, nice memories, isn't it? So, are we also going to reproduce that Mach 1 approach? <laughs> oh no, we're, we're doing things tidy and proper today, <laughs> other than ignoring the wind direction, I guess. Fair enough. Yeah, we're slowing down to 95 knots. Ooh, daring. You do know Speed Racer will be watching you, right? There you have it. Yeah, I thought they did a reasonable job of modeling the tank farm, too, that's just outside of the airport proper. At least close enough to give me a flashback.
So Honda Jet also has a uh, manufacturing facility here uh, at this airport, and Boom Aviation, which is building that supersonic uh, passenger jet, uh, also has a footprint here as well. I think Honda is doing wing assemblies and uh, other equipment for the aircraft here. All right, we'll turn south for 41 nautical miles for our coffee stop, uh, this is Stanley County. How did the touch and go go this time, Joe? Well, I had a partner landing, so uh, I shared the runway. So it was, it was certainly uh, less exciting than uh, my original attempt. Just at FYI, Stanley County does have uh, parallel runways. So uh, one of them is used by an Air National Guard unit that's actually based out of that location. That's pretty cool, I just realised in Valenta you can click on anybody's aeroplane that's using it and you can see their 3D track as well. <laughs> Very cool. Hope you can switch it off. Oh yeah, you just toggle them. But how is it compared to what we're used to now with the transmitter and the land map? What do you think? It's a different tool, but it allows you to see where everybody is. Uh, but no, no name tags or anything, right? Uh, if you put the mouse over somebody, you can find out who they are.
think with this latest release, they've added uh, some team functionality too, so you can add people to a group. You can, but it's got a limit of 10 people in the group. And that's not going to help us release. much, is it, Jonathan? <laughs> I don't think it's really designed for a group of 50 or 60, though. But then not many things are. <laughs> Does the 10 limit apply to premium subscription, Jonathan? I think so. It's. Um, I think it would. As soon as you start trying to arrange people into groups like that, it just tends to turn into a bit of a pain. Something you can do, which would be very simple to implement, is you can filter the aeroplanes you are seeing on the map so their call signs include a sequence of characters that you fill in. So if everybody had like VFL in their call sign, you could only, you know, you could only show people with VFL in their call sign. Well, there's an idea. <laughs> Would that be call sign or player name? It's the call sign that you're using in Volanta. When you start, when you set your flight up, for any flight you do, you can change your call sign. Roger. Well, that's going to be very, very handy. Well, Speed Racer, here we come. Will it do a, a follow you like a little lab map? Yes, yeah, you can make it keep you in the middle of the screen. Good job. So do you use it instead of little nav map or with little nav map? As well as. It just gives you that nice plot of where people are that are also using it. But on top of that, it's also recording your flights for you, so you've got an electronic logbook for free. So it records which aeroplane you flew, um, you know, and then you can go and delve through where have I flown this plane. And you can see which countries you visited. There's all sorts of things it does. It it's also, also got how many days you fly in a row. Yes, it also um, has got this thing called aero caches. So there's missions for you to go and find various places around the world. And they're not just like silly made up ones. It's things like, you know, the, the first uh, A330 to land in Antarctica. So you can go and try and recreate it yourself. They'd have to um, sit out there waiting for you first, wouldn't they, to know you've been there? <laughs> In snow cones. <laughs> yeah, what was the guy called? In Frozen, that had the shop with his. He had a, a, an off offer on, didn't he, on all the things he couldn't sell. I have three daughters, so for several years we lived the Frozen movie. Understood. There was no choice. Well, you have my sympathy, Jonathan. Um, I fortunately, well, I had two and one, two boys and one girl. Uh, going through the teenage years, I think I would uh, go with the boys, thank you. Everybody always said that when they were young. They said, yeah, boys start out in nightmare and get easier. Girls start out easier and get much more difficult. <laughs> yeah, Common denominator, I, I think. I definitely agree with that. Without a doubt. I was the big, biggest SOB in my daughter's eyes when she was about 15.
That's how old mine is now. Well, mine's, mine's 47 now. All right. <laughs> and she loves me to bits, so, that, you know, oh, I'll forgive her for those past misdemeanors. I've still got a chance, then. You definitely still got a chance. All of a sudden, they mature and grow up and stop being catty little brats. <laughs> yeah, we get smarter as they get older, I think. Oh, something else you might be interested in, Joe, about Volanta is you can overlay the VAT sim sectors and it tells you who the controllers are and their frequencies. That's uh, very clever as well. I'm not sure if it's three-dimensional. I'm just about to try it. No, that's a shame, isn't it? That would have really been the icing on the cake if it had, had three-dimensional sector diagrams. Maybe with the next up. Yeah, well, hopefully I'll have a bit to uh, play about with it the next uh, week or so. You can do that in Google Maps, by the way, if anybody's ever wondered about that. You can get the KML files for the three-dimensional structures in the airspace, and then you can spin Google Maps around in 3D and see the shapes. Yeah. Basically, yes. That's how I see the proper airspace stuff. <laughs> and some giant jigsaw pieces. Yeah. Yeah, I've been slowly learning about the airspace, this traffic pattern, and that sort of stuff over the years, so... I, I can now read a matter about, well, I think 50%. I'm getting there, slowly. Yeah, I've only ever heard one uh, airspace uh, argument live, which was a little bit scary. Uh, when the uh, pilot of a little Cessna thing, whatever it was, was trying to explain he had a very expensive uh, GPS system which told him he was outside controlled airspace and he says well we've got the multi-million pound equivalent and you are in S in our airspace turn left heading 230 <laughs> ouch <laughs> uh, yes we can hear you you're very quiet though some really nice turbulence here today. Yeah. Well, time for an unrestricted climb and a quick uh, look around at high level. Uh, radio test again, is that any better please? Yes, much better. Space shuttle status. I saw that out the right wing. Uh, has anyone else had problems with VR this evening at all? I just simply couldn't get my headset to work. It kept crashing. Nope. I went to a friend's this afternoon and he's got a quest too and he was stripping to get his working because we tried to do that uh, French Island we did a few weeks ago. We got it going there eventually, it was just very slow to, to initially set up, connect. Well, my windows... Um uh, my uh, Reverb G2 simply wouldn't work at all this afternoon. It's been an absolute pain. I've tried absolutely everything.
cliff since we're in the middle of trees of green do you want to uh plug your flight for next week gosh is it next week <laughs> uh okay yeah so next sunday we'll be flying around central italy starting from the sort of umbria area which is just somewhere i've been on holiday a few times because a friend has a house there so start over lake bolzina then head through some mountains and there's a few there's a couple of very short runways that were all found by accident than anything but uh, yeah then sort of fly south down the east coast a little bit i think if i remember right i better fly again this week i to make sure i know where i'm going but there's a couple of nice cities in there a bit well towns on top of hills i've been to which uh, so the first part I know, the rest of it's mainly I just find the found a uh, track through sort of the mountains towards the coast and then towards the south. So it should be a bit of fun, hopefully. Starting at eight as usual. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's happening simultaneously from two continents. When's the UK go to daylight saving time, gentlemen? Last weekend in March. Okay. Last Sunday, last Sunday in March, basically. I have to start getting up earlier then. Goes back to 8 a.m. And then a week or two later, when we change, it goes to 7 a.m. and that's a struggle. Yeah, remember some uh, races with Aussies. <laughs> You're getting up at 5 a.m. <laughs> yeah, it's tough, tough on the Aussie boys. That's why we don't see many of them. Marginal for us in Kiwi land, but um, they're pretty tough on them if they want to join us. That is, if we got up early enough. Yeah, that's right. That would have been this weekend. Or we just pulled an all-nighter. Sure. I had to race this morning because I didn't get out of the sack until quarter past eight. A.M. that was. For a 9 a.m. start and do a little bit of rushing around. So, that is my mind's not working. Does your saving time go the other way? Well, we're on daylight saving now. Right. So, um, we're, we're a, an hour ahead. So, with plus 13 hours at the moment on UTC. Oh, okay. So, we move an hour forward, you move an hour back. We go an hour back, but I think we don't go an hour back until about two weeks after you guys yeah. go forward. In the spring, you go spring forward. In the fall, you fall back. That's how it works. Yep. We just put the clock on the other side of the couch. <laughs> yeah, that works too. <laughs> Since the flu to Dr. Killer. Ornithopter ahead, 12 o'clock, low. Switch it again. I'm still reluctant to uh, pronounce that name of that vehicle, though. I'm pretty sure I'm going to spit all over my monitor when I try.
I wonder if I'm going to need the entire coffee break to try and land this helicopter somewhere on the airfield. Yeah, this particular part of North Carolina that we're flying over right now is part of the Yawari National Forest. So it's, you know, obviously sparse in terms of its development, nothing in the forest itself. About the only thing you'll encounter there, you know, bees and uh, timber rattlers and uh, mosquitoes, maybe a squirrel or two. And black bear. They must be pretty hard squeals to live there. Yeah, just to the east of this airfield that we're going to land at is a, uh, a scout camp that I spent a lot of summers with my son at. And uh, we found quite a few uh, timber rattlers in our campsites that needed to be, shall we say, dispensed with. I gather you're, you're talking snakes, are you, Joe? Yeah, very, very venomous snake in the, uh, in the U.S. We very don't have, deadly. we don't have anything like that here in God's own. Nothing that's going to eat you or bite you or... Just things that punch you, right? Oh wait, Kiwi land, sorry. I didn't catch that, I'm sorry. Uh, no worries. So the interesting thing about this uh, scouting camp that I was just talking about is it, with it being right outside of this uh, National Guard base, it was not uncommon to see C-130s fly over and paratroopers jump out and land in the uh, activity field at the uh, scout camp. So it was kind of cool. Ooh, they get their parachute badge at the same time. One badge I never wanted to get. I was comfortable with the fact that if I had to, I would be able to do it. But I could never see the point in jumping out a perfectly serviceable aeroplane. I was I say, right to the one you don't really want is the Caterpillar one. I have to disagree with. So which side of the airfield do we park on not to get shot? I would stay to the southeast side, please. Yeah, you. Just don't make any hissing noise. Yeah, 
You know, the other cool thing that they were doing at this base was dropping cargo, so that was kind of interesting to get to see. Like uh, pa pallets, you mean? Yep. Pallets and paratroopers. Yeah, we have a similar area in the UK called um, Salisbury Plain. They do a lot on that, and that's it's quite good to watch. Yeah, the main set of buildings on this particular airfield are to the southeast, roughly one two zero degrees. Right, so I'm gonna go make a quick drink. We gotta find a coffee shop first, Jonathan. <laughs> it's around here to the left somewhere, I'd say. So someone on the live stream's asking which server we're on, we're on Southeast Asia. And we're going to be at Stanley County Kilo Victor Uniform Juliet for the next five or ten minutes. I think I'll just park up over here. You bring a thermosel. Oh, no, no, no. I want it freshly made, thank you, um, Joe. And I'll have cinnamon on my cappuccino, please.
Cheetah. Right, back back up the state, I guess. Kilo Echo X ray X ray, which is Davidson County. A lot of money spent there for uh, giving our NASCAR boys a place to fly in and out of.
Yeah, I'm ready to check out coffee, please. Hey, kid. Oh, you're loud and clear to me. Thank you. Just out of interest, did anybody see the article I shared on... I think I shared it in Discord as well as the Facebook group with the um, the private pilots and the uh, flight instructors arguing over correct procedures for doing things. Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> the actual yeah. article was okay. It was just the comments were really entertaining with everybody kind of contradicting each other. Yeah, to keep it friendly, family oriented, I guess, so uh, we could define the word expert, right? <laughs> <laughs> the best bit, though, is when you get two instructors disagreeing with each other. Although you don't actually know on the internet if they're actually an instructor or not, do you? Well, I guess that's better than two FAA examiners arguing with each other. I watched uh, Top Gun Maverick on Netflix the other night. I think they've only just um, released it on Netflix. Good to see it again. That was the second one. I wonder if they'll ever let another movie use the real hardware like they did with that one. No, it was a good movie. I, I quite enjoyed it. I enjoyed it more than the first one. But you had to see the first one for the second one to have any relevance. <laughs> Do any of you guys ever watch, um, is it called Mover Ruins Movies on CJ Lemoyne's YouTube channel? Yeah, he's really good. Very yeah. entertaining. So it sits there with a few of his ex-fighter pilot buddies, and they watch a movie and just rip it to pieces <laughs> for inaccuracies and things like that. I think the only movie they sat and watched where they got halfway through the movie and then looked at each other and realised they hadn't criticised anything was Flight of the Intruder, which turned out was very, very accurate. I think the, the thing they usually pull movies up for is they get the uniforms wrong all the time. Or the place they're doing a briefing, it'll be obviously in the movie, they'll be on the flight deck doing some briefing and actually no, it's usually in some nondescript little cube of a room deep in the ship with nothing to see. Right, I'm going to set off in the right direction at a steady speed. Yeah, me too. Me too. Any fish in these lakes down here, Joe? Oh, yeah. So, um, variety would be large and small mouth bass predominantly. Catfish, which are bottom feeders. They're all freshwater fish though, eh? 
Tastes like mud. Tastes like mud. Strange man, I can't follow the heading anymore. That's all right, Ellis. We'll just coat it in you know, milk and flour and deep fry it. It'll be fine. Probably is. Um, um, the I shouldn't prejudge it. I've never eaten uh, freshwater bass. We don't have them here. Bass is, is usually pretty good. Catfish, I can take or leave, but ask someone else from our region, and we'll get a very different answer. They'll love it. It's because I've never had anything else. Probably. Can't beat a nice bit of saltwater bream or snapper, as we call it. We got another fish down here called Terrakee. Beautiful. And I like the deep water stuff, like the deep sea bass, gropers. We call them hard pocker down here. Blue nose, another beautiful fish. But you gotta pull them up from about three or four hundred meters, so it's a bit of a struggle. That big fish. That'd be nice. Quite a lot of recreational boating in this area. We're getting ready to fly over what's called High Rock Lake. Um, it's a part of the uh, Yadkin River uh, basin. So uh, Yadkin River throw, flows through this and uh, dammed up a bit to, to create this uh, body of water here in front of us.
way back, right, when they dammed it up. Yeah, I'm not sure when they built this particular dam. It's been a minute. Do they use it for hydro power, uh, Joe? Uh, probably, I'm not sure. Don't you need, wouldn't it need to be in a mountain to do that? Unless it's, is it tidal? There's no mountain or no tide. They can't really uh, drive anything with it, I don't think. No, I mean, I do know that they, we do have coal plants that uh, use uh, the water out of the river basin for cooling. My guess is no, Ellis, but that's just a guess on my part. Winds are 278 at 4, so runway 24. Copy that, 24. Roger that.
Yeah, another part of the agriculture industry that just popped up in the last 20 years in North Carolina is actually uh, we have a lot of uh, grapes growing for wine. So a number of wineries located in this part of the state. That is interesting. Are they any good? Yeah, the wine that I've had from Biltmore House is quite good. I don't know that I've had anything from, from up here from any of these folks, but a lot, lot of places that are growing the grapes. Nice to be able to buy local wine. Yeah, the winery that I was thinking of here in Davidson County is actually owned by one of the uh, major NASCAR team owners. Mm, I've got a new neighbor down at my holiday home, and he's the uh, chief of uh, one of the large um, wine importers, distributors, and he was telling me that all the big vineyards in New Zealand are being bought up by the French, believe it or not. I was going to say bonjour Bruce, but that's more Australian, isn't it? Yeah, I've been three or four of our big wine growers are now owned by, it's a French family. Um, he did tell me the name of them, but I'm, I can't pronounce it. Okay, so I'm on push to talk, so the rest of the people on Discord can't hear me say this. I'm going to answer some questions on the live stream. This is the Black Square Analog C208. Also, um, the question there about the G1000, yeah, you can't put waypoints in via their coordinates into the G1000 yet. I believe um, working title may be working on it. So next airfield is Rowan County, just down the road. Our next stop is Rowan County Regional, and it's only six or seven, no, 11 miles, 11.92 nautical miles. Have a play with the ILS again. Follow Interstate 85, you can't miss it. 109.95. ILS 109.95. Runway two zero. It's Roger. funny. I, I often forget that it's push to talk to talk on Discord. We force that on purpose. But I often forget I can talk to the live stream without Discord. You know, without disrupting what's going on. Two uh, two degrees. We were talking about power generation earlier, so just off to my bearing 15 is a coal powered uh, power plant operated by our regional utility. I just passed that on my left. And this is also the Yadkin River. It has a bridge. 
that Joe's gonna land his hawk on, it looks like. I'm gonna attempt it. <laughs> See, there's a solar farm there as well. Uh, that stretch of interstate that's, um, again, to my bearing 1-5, has been under construction since I was a small boy. It's gone from two lanes to eight. It's one of the busiest interstates on the East Coast. Our motorway's got busily going from three lanes to four, and now they're going from four lanes back to three. People didn't like it. Watch 1985 on final. We understand 85 and 95 are the main ones. And then if you're going west, it would be I 40, which runs through Greensboro, actually. I 40 runs from uh, Wilmington to, uh, oh, what's the name in California? Carlsbad? Yeah. Barstow. Barstow, that's right, it's Barstow. Well, yeah, anyway. and, for, and for all practical purposes, if you take uh, State Highway 58, which is mostly freeway anyway, it takes you to Bakersfield and I-5. Oh, you said the 5, it's making my right eye twitch. <laughs> One year I took the 10 cross country, east to west. Way down south. And was that interesting in the Chinese curse sense of the word, or just uh, interesting and informative? There's a Chinese curse that goes, may you live in interesting times. <laughs> I'll have to remember that one. That's how Terry Pratchett used to sign off his books. Uh, the premise being, the more there is going on, the more there is going wrong. Short final two zero. which of the group flights it was. We were talking about soft drinks. So this is Salisbury, North Carolina. This is home to a, um, a regional soft drink that does get some national exposure. It's called Cheerwine, and it's uh, quite delightful. It's a cherry-flavored drink. It's really delish. Love it. Never heard of that one. Hey, uh, the Cracker Bells out here on the West Coast, they usually carry it. Non-alcoholic? Affirmative, non-alcoholic. It's a uh, cherry with a very light, light cola taste to it. Yeah, and it's quite different than Dr. Pepper. It's um, very much more carbonated for sure. to the point where you have to take care if you've got a two liter bottle you, you better be careful opening it or it will shower you with red soda this is so funny because i'm coming in down the ils from the back of the pack i can see everybody's lights it's like some sort of i don't know flak attack going on <laughs>
Oh, my helicopter's following the ILS. Where's the ILS going then? Either that or it's just crashing on its own. Surely that's the definition of autopilot following the ILS, isn't it? One should be better than to let auto fly anything. So, my favourite uh, smiler about the woman who crashed her car in the States. And in our statement, she said to the officer, well, I had it on uh, had it on cruise control. She thought it was autopilot. Yes, there's a, actually a story way, way back when on the wire. Uh, he got, bought a new motor home, and uh, he put it on cruise control and uh, stepped back into the kitchen to make himself a cup of coffee, and he was wondering why he ended up upside down. Entirely believable. I love the crew. I love the cruise control and uh, the new car. It's preemptive. You know, you can sit behind, set your speed, and uh, it just follows the speed of the vehicle in front of you. If he slows down, you slow down. If he speeds up, you speed up. It's awesome. Going back to Cherry Aid, uh, one summer I had a bottle of uh, Cherry Aid and the footwell in the back of the car, and it exploded with the heat. Uh, and it's the cleanest I've ever had the back uh, carpet in the car. It's a fantastic carpet cleaner. <laughs> It always amazes me when you see videos of Coca-Cola being put on chrome and it coming out like factory new. <laughs> when you ask the question, Jonathan, what the hell's it doing to my teeth? Oh yeah, we always warn our kids that. Yeah, what's it doing to your innards? Exactly. Yeah, the lining of your stomach is, should uh, come into question. I remember when we were kids, we used to use silver paper with water to clean rust off of our bikes. And it worked like a magic trick. We never did figure out how it worked. Yeah, I never knew about that until recently. I stopped watching all these classic car restorations. Yeah, I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, one thing I do know about Coca-Cola is uh, the stomach acid doesn't attack it. It attacks the stomach acid. <laughs> Yeah, thankfully, the lining of your stomach is incredibly tough. Otherwise, yeah, there'd be worse issues going on. And the way most gentlemen abuse it, Jonathan, it's no to wonder it lasts at all. <laughs> I'm wondering if uh, the alcohol for a mixture has some sort of attenuating effect on it. <laughs> So John's right, asking next how high I'm flying. Uh, Charlotte Douglas International Airport. Uh, I did not know this until recently, but uh, Charlotte is actually in the top seven or eight in terms of busiest airports in the world. I guess it's one of those hubs, isn't it? A bit like um, Atlanta or anywhere like that. Yeah, U.S. Air has a you know, major presence. Actually, they're getting ready to build another another parallel runway here in Charlotte. Another couple billion dollars dropped. Yeah, you'll probably find that there's an Amazon hub there, and that's why. <laughs> yeah, there's actually a... Uh, I live in Concord, which is north of Charlotte, and uh, there's a Amazon distribution center here, and I can order something at 10 o'clock in the morning and have it on my door at like 1.30 or 2. That's mad. 
they're just um, going through the licensing over here for the moment to trial the drones out. So there's been a limited trial of them up in the north or in North Midlands, I guess, in the UK in you know various small spotty places, but they're looking to push it out nationwide. There's a drone port here in uh, in Concord too, Jonathan. Um, it's actually used for distributing pharmaceutical stuff to uh, hospitals. Yeah. Yeah, they've been doing that in the UK as well. Over to the Isle of Wight, they've been uh, trialing uh, a drone. I was going to say they're doing it to the Isles of, Isles of Scilly as well, aren't they? There's aeroplanes flying backwards and forwards that are pilotless. Yeah, that was well, so the Isle of Wight. They've definitely got it. Is that the company that they? Um, that the flies aid out to remote villages and so on in Africa. It could be. Yeah, it's very clever. It's still unnerving though, isn't it? Seeing an aeroplane coming in with no pilot in it. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to fathom. It's only like the driverless cars though, isn't it? They're so much safer than ones with an actual human behind the wheel because the common factor in 99.9% .9 of accidents is the idiot human. I always remember back when I was learning to drive, uh, my old man said to me, now look here, son, just look at it this way. Every, look at everybody else out on the road and treat them as a total idiot and hope that they look at you and treat you the same way. You're talking about horses now, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's a paraphrase for us, Gump. People are like a box of rocks. You never know how dumb they're going to get. <laughs> Yeah, well, if I ever get uh, stuck behind a slow driver or whatever on a country road and I'm tempted to overtake, I always imagine myself coming the other way and usually just hang back. Yeah. We're all heading for runway 23, are we? Yep, looks good to me. Yeah, let's use the vintage runway, runway 23. Do you still have uh, FSLTO on for Charlotte? Uh, no, I could switch it back on though. It will fill the sky up, won't it? <laughs> Probably grind the um, simulator into dust though. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Let's watch the screen fill up with flights. <laughs> So there's a uh, aviation museum at, uh, at Charlotte that has the um, in the Hudson U.S. Air aircraft there, in, in addition to some other pieces. And then there's a um, C-17 unit uh, operated by the Charlotte Air National Guard, which is based out of Charlotte. <laughs> oh dear! I've just zoomed in on Little Nav Map and turned on the AI aircraft after turning on FSLTL. There's about 150 planes on the ground. It will put the S in stutter. <laughs> it will. It'll be quite entertaining to see, though. There's lots of regional jets parked around.
On our way to Charlotte Douglas, um, Concord Regional would have been off uh, to bearing one two. And then further along that bearing, um, more toward the south would then be uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway. to the destination. And that Flight Sim.2 add-on uh, really does make uh, Concord Regional look the way that it does look. It's, it's very, very close. Yeah, I now have a huge stream of commercial traffic coming in on the approach. <laughs> stretching out for about 60 or 70 miles. Yeah, we used to get a constant stream uh, over my house, Jonathan, until they built Concord Regional and then they re-vectored all of the traffic into Charlotte to, you know, for traffic avoidance purposes, but uh, it was a pretty straight, steady stream of uh, airplanes. I just get GA traffic and the occasional jet out of uh, Concord. If they're having a NASCAR race here, they'll usually park. If they're having a flyover from whatever branch of service happens to be doing it that day, they usually park the planes either at uh, Concord or in Salisbury. Just looking at the pattern of aeroplanes coming in, there's about a two mile separation. It's not much, is it? Yeah, there we go. Good night, gentlemen. Thanks for the ride. Thanks for the explanation, Joe. Good night. Oh, see you soon. Good night. See you. Well, I think the separation to Heathrow is to be 90 seconds. So, uh, between landing aircraft, so it's not a lot of time. If you downloaded the downtown scenery for Charlotte, it's actually very well done too. So, major banking center in downtown Charlotte. So, uh, Bank of America is headquartered here. And then there's also Panther Stadium that's that's prominent in the uh, in the scenery, which is our NFL team, soccer team.
for those of you who are interested, I'll plug it again. I am doing a uh, group flight on Saturday next week at uh, our usual time uh, in the DC-3. So any vintage aircraft like that will do. If you've got the uh, Twin Beach, that would work as well. Um, and we're just going to go up and listen to some uh, large radial engines drone. Sounds great, Joe. Looking forward. You too can have fun with a large tail dragger. Yeah. Actually, that yeah. Duckworks mod really has made made a big difference in that plane, and actually having a set of rotor pedals has also made a huge difference in terms of being able to control it. And the God's friends. Yes, indeed. It adds to it. Yeah. And if I don't watch my food intake, I'm going to be a large TO dragger myself. Quite frankly, the, one of the best purchases in terms of kit this year from the FAM really was those rotor pedals. It's made a huge difference. Which ones did you Which get? Which ones did you get? I got the, the uh, Pro Logitech. Uh, how do you like them? Love them. For the, for the, as, as Ellis told me before I bought them, bang for the buck, you're not going to beat them. So I my, my frame rate is in the floor, but there's a lot of airplanes here. <laughs> yeah, got to go, guys. Uh, thanks very much, Joe. See you next time. I need to upgrade my graphics card, I think. Take care, Although... Joe. Yes, sir. I think I might go for a 4060 Ti. The 4070 Super seems to be a better value. Oh. All right, folks, we're on the home stretch. I think I found GA parking over here, that'll do. I don't think I've ever seen the frame rate this bad. Let's go and switch off the injector and see if they all vanish. Hey Peter, what's the destination for Monday's evening flight? Do you know I have to have a look? It helps, isn't that I think? Yeah, I think someone in the Alps, isn't it? Oh yeah, Austrian valleys. Uh, it's somewhere I can't pronounce.
machinery with pointy bits, I guess. Yeah, it's if I remember correctly, it's uh, it's just following the valleys uh, down and around. Is my flying tonight is very erratic. Cityscape's very well modelled. Yeah, it's it's very, very well done. Yes, I nearly managed to take out two radio towers all at one go. This airport is seriously big, isn't it? Right, thanks for the flight, Joe, and... Uh... I assume we're one way to zero. <laughs> Okay, so just looking at the sort yes, of live sir. stream comments there, uh, there's a guy saying at the end, I'm just starting out with Flight Simulator and joined on this video's tutorials. Can anyone suggest a good quality site for scenery add-ons and plane mods? Um, Orbex. <laughs> Orbex has got lots of scenery and it's quite good value, quite depending on the exchange rate. At the end of the runway. Um, yeah, so there are several else. Martin Marietta rock quarries here in Cabarrus County. Flight Sim.2 has lots of freeware. Um, if you're looking for some really good aeroplanes, Just Flight is very good for aeroplanes. There's lots of marketplaces actually. There's Contrail is a good marketplace to go and look for things so you can compare yeah, the prices. Yeah, history that we don't have time to cover today. Yeah, Google Reed's Goldmine uh, was the site of the largest discovery of gold in the eastern United States. Right, I'm going to leave the live stream there.